Hey guys, Dylan Tommy here. I'm back in the swing and I'm gonna update this green room. Just wanna take a minute and say thank you to everyone for their comments and their support and just tell you that I truly feel blessed to be involved with such kind-hearted and positive individuals. So let's cruise the green room. We'll check out a couple of things. I think I'll start over here with the guppy tank because uh, I have young, new fry in here. And I haven't been able to show you guys recently uh, the young offspring. They've been buried in the baby tears and in all this thick vegetation. I'm gonna try to take a look back here and we can see some of the younger fish. And they're growing very fast. It's great to see the young fry and watch them mature. Because before you know it, they're sub-adults. Let's see if I can find one of the subs. Here's a little sub-adult female here, and she's growing up very quick. Look at this gal. There's one of my red guys. Oh, I love this guy. I hope he's one of my breeders, because look at that fancy tail and that beautiful red pattern. Definitely have some younger generation in this tank now. I really enjoy seeing them. But I'm gonna keep cruising and I'll let you guys know about a new little update we got going on here in the Crevensis tank. Because I have a new generation in this tank. I dragged my feet and I didn't move the Crevensis and I didn't sell them and I let them just grow out in this tank. And if you see, they have some free swimming fry here. I noticed this a couple days ago and I actually have some older videos. But both these cichlids are great parents. You see them uh, defending their young and uh, taking them around the tank to uh, feed on all the biofilm and all the algae. And I've just been excited that there's a, a whole batch of new young albino and normal crebensis fry in here. So really cool, I wanted to update that. I thought they were doing a little pairing up and uh, when I saw this female here and I saw that her belly was so red, I thought there might be some breeding activity. But they did it. This will be the third generation of albino crebensis fry. And I think it's great. I love keeping my fish in these naturalized tanks and just allowing them to, uh, to do their breeding in the thick vegetation. I mean, that's part of my method. That's the kind of fish keeping I enjoy. So I left them alone. I left them in there. And we're looking at new little fry now. Well, we'll keep going. Haven't done a lot of uh, trimming in any of these tanks. So really not much to update. The large 55 is what it is. The baby tears are still growing out. You saw the clippings that I had moved into another tank and uh, it's just monstrous. Tons of baby tears that I might be selling. Uh, I just recently set up a natural aquatics web page to uh, sell a lot of my aquatic plants and uh, likely some of the Crebensis and Burchardi fry and maybe some of the guppies once I get that uh, breeding colony really going. But uh, stay tuned for that guys. Natural aquatics web page is uh, coming up soon. But I'll keep rolling here. We'll quickly uh, Check out the vivarium because it's popping. It's so green nowadays. A lot of this vegetation is looking really good and I'm stoked about it. I told you it's a slow growing system, but uh, it's really looking good. A lot of this moss, even some of the moss that I had pulled out from outside has really done very well. Even this little water feature, which I just have packed with moss and a little bit of baby tears down there is uh, growing out fairly decent. But there's the vivarium, like I said, very slow growing system. Check out this little setup I have down here. Check out those baby tears. That's about a 0.5 gallon, not too sure. It's actually probably about 18 ounces, but uh, I can grow plants in anything. Figured I'd give you guys a quick look at that. There's no filter, there's nothing in there. I do frequent water changes. Frequent meaning maybe every two weeks, I'll change uh, the entire water in that system. But it's just a cool little, uh, little setup here that I threw a couple little extra baby tear clippings in. And they're surviving, they're thriving in here. A little tiny fish tank, probably a little too small to uh, add any inhabitant. Even even uh, shrimp, I think would be a little, too, uh, a little too big to put in a small tank like that. But we'll cruise down here. 
You guys haven't seen this tank in a little bit. I've been letting it grow out. And what I've been doing is uh, feeding this tank as much as I can with the, with the algae wafers in hopes of uh, getting the red cherry shrimp to uh, repopulate this tank. They did very well when they were living with Mojo and they started to breed. And I moved almost the entire colony into this system. So they're in here. They've uh, spread themselves out and uh, I believe they're starting to breed. I have some adults in here, some larger ones. You see that little red guy right there. But there's several uh, other generations in this tank. We'll take a look. I just don't see any. Often enough, I see this entire substrate loaded with red cherry shrimp. And it's what made me decide to uh, keep this as a, as a colony here, as a, as a breeding project, and just let the, the red cherries grow out. But the vegetation's looking great in this tank. That sword is just blowing up here, and the Anubius is doing very well. All this moss here is kind of covering the driftwood. That Anubius is actually attached to uh, two pieces of driftwood that you can't even see because uh, the Java moss has just grown out among it. But I did want to update that tank. I don't show it that often. Like I said, it only has the, the red cherry shrimps in here now, and I've been letting the vegetation uh, grow out. We'll keep rolling. I think I'll duck into uh, the Brichardi tank. This tank's doing okay. You guys know that I, I lost my main man, the sire, the male. And uh, what's left is just this large school of uh, Melampralugus Brichardi. Might be selling off a few of these little Brichardi. Not too sure yet. I actually enjoy growing them up and I really love seeing them in this community like this. So uh, it's been hard to part with them, but eventually I'll probably uh, sell off some of these Nolampralogus Brichardi. The thing with Brichardi is they exhibit a collective nursery, meaning the younger generation helps protect and rear the fry and the subsequent generations. So it's a really cool behavior to see and you don't have to worry about other fish eating the young fry because the collective nursery, it's instinctual for them to uh, protect the next generation. So really cool species to keep. They, they breed fairly easily, I told you guys that. It just so happens I, I waited a while for my main man to breed. And that was another reason why I was so uh, upset that I lost him, just because uh, he was a, a fish that I had for pretty long time before he even started his breeding activity. We have lots of sub-adults in here now and uh, really stoked about this colony minus the fact that we no longer have a sire in here. But there's the tank and they are certainly spread out. They're all over the place. There's some of the large ones up here. This guy's pretty big. He's probably the largest one, huh? One of those first generations. All right, guys. We're gonna quickly uh, look at the paludarium. This time of night, the drip's running and uh, we only have one light on in the system. It's a dusk look. You guys seen the dusk look in the past. And uh, it's a nice little effect just before the lights completely go out. Looks like the sun's about to set. And I just don't see the newts. We'll check their little spot here on the embankment. And I don't see them. Although I do know of another spot that I noticed recently that they've been hanging out on. I noticed he's been climbing up, up to this little top. Let's see if we can see him in here gets right down in here. There he is. Kind of a tough angle. They climb right into all these caves. 
that are tucked behind these bromeliads and uh, all this vegetation here. So the newts have definitely been utilizing the terrestrial parts of the paludarium. And uh, I do think that's cool. From the beginning, I wanted to keep a large water feature for any of the aquatic habitants I decided to keep, whether it be fish or shrimp. And when I decided to keep the newts, uh, I thought they were the most perfect inhabitants for uh, you know, an aquatic-based inhabitant or an aquatic-based uh, environment. And since the first month and a half, they just haven't utilized this aquascape at all. As you guys know, they've been uh, hanging out terrestrially, spending a lot of time on the embankment and uh, on these ledges here, exploring the tank. And I think that's great. Uh, I'm glad they're utilizing the entire system rather than just uh, the water feature. But uh, it's much easier to feed them down here. Uh, they fed in on the pellets when I had them uh, in the water column. And uh, feeding them on land is a little more difficult uh, with the earthworms. It's not the, it's not the best form of protein for uh, growing newts. And I'd really like to uh, get some pellets into them. So uh, hopefully they'll uh, make their way back into the water feature. And uh, I'll be happy about that. But there's the paludarium, guys. I did want to update all this lush java moss growth. It's finally filled in. As you can see, it's, it's finally got his, its immersed terrestrial form. Uh, initially, when you first saw this paludarium, it was just aquatic form java moss kind of draped on all these ledges and it, it didn't look very natural at all and now that it's filled in and the water drip effect has kind of you know naturalized the system uh, it's really looking healthy and uh, lush Well, thanks for hanging out with me tonight in the green room, guys. Totally appreciate it. And stay tuned for Natural Aquatics' new uh, webpage. I'll be able to finally send out some of these fish to you guys and uh, some of the aquatic plants. Uh, it should go without saying that the plants that I keep are very hardy, easy to keep aquatic plants that do well in naturalized systems. So thanks for hanging, guys. Love ya. Peace.